But the one holdout was Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates, the deciding factor and the most vocal critic, uh, arguably, of Speaker McCarthy. So first of all, good morning to you. Good morning. All right. We have a lot to talk about. So you technically still didn't vote for him. You voted present, which says a lot. So what happened? You've spoken at length here at News Nation that you did not want Kevin McCarthy elected speaker. It happened anyway. Did you see this as a win? Did you see this as you got the concessions you needed? What's, what's your take? Well, this was a big win for the House of Representatives and the people of our country. I believe Nancy Pelosi is going to be viewed as the last of the imperial speakers that centralized power and really took a lot of the decision making away from the membership. To Speaker McCarthy's great credit, though it did take about 15 rounds of balloting, he was willing to decentralized power to give individual members the opportunity to isolate spending, to call it out and to force a vote. We're also going to have rules that allow open amendments so that legislation can be considered on the merits. And the number one goal of our transformational rules change was to ensure that we never again had an omnibus vote where you had to vote up or down on every bit of money to fund the government for nine months, 12 months at a time. We think that there should be individual appropriations bills. That way, spending can get specific scrutiny. And uh, now we've got our speaker, and I wish him the best of luck and hope that we're successful in our endeavors. I want to talk a little bit more about the future with McCarthy as speaker, but we spoke uh, last year, and obviously uh, you are a, a supporter of former President Trump. You had this to say when we actually talked. Let's uh, take a listen. I'm a Trump Republican through and through. I'll be with President Trump, and it's actually my hope and, frankly, my expectation that Ron DeSantis might be as well at the end of the day. But there's a special energy that President Trump brings to politics. I expect he'll announce for president in the coming days, and I look forward to standing with him and supporting him in that endeavor. Obviously, that was before he announced his run for president in 2024, but he actually made a call to the GOP saying, please back McCarthy. But you still remain to hold out even after that call until the 15th round. Why was it so important for you uh, to make sure some of these concessions came through? Well, I learned from President Trump that sometimes you get a better deal at 1201 than at 1159. Uh, the concessions are important because they allow us to tackle America's real challenges. When we originally were negotiating with uh, Kevin McCarthy, he was unwilling to make specific concessions regarding the legislation that would come to the floor at the beginning of this Congress. He's now made concessions on term limits votes, balanced budget votes, and specific immigration enforcement that won't just occur at the border, but will actually be internal immigration enforcement throughout the country so that people who are not here legally return to their home countries. Uh, I think that gives us broad ability to make the case to the American people, and I think that that, combined with our energy goals and our goals to reduce inflation, will really bring the Republican conference together. I know it looked a little messy in the first four days, <laughs> but sometimes you can front load the pain and actually come together as a team with greater strength and greater unity. And I get the sense that's where we are this morning. Okay, greater strength, greater unity, but we have to talk about one of the more dramatic moments uh, when Congressman Mike Rogers had to be restrained. It was like somebody grabbing him by the shoulders in the face. Oh, exactly what was going on between the two of you? Well, uh, Chairman Rogers was a little frustrated with the position I had taken, but keep in mind, this is a man that I've worked with very closely for six years on national defense issues. And so because we have such a close working relationship, it's okay that you get animated or frustrated and then move past it. I think what was really different about this is because we had cameras actually filming the members of Congress on the floor. That doesn't usually happen. And here the American people got to see some of the chats, some of the disagreements. And I think that's actually a good thing for the Republic. I'm going to be working with some of my colleagues in the Congress to allow more cameras on the floor to be able to see what the elected representatives of the people are doing. And that means you'll see some moments of high tension and perhaps a little bit of discord. But it's OK. In every workplace in America, people can have have moments of great energy and moments of disagreement. But at the end of the day, you come together for a common goal. That's what Chairman Rogers and I are going to be doing on the Armed Services Committee this Congress. But are you concerned that with more cameras, people will perceive it as a circus more than chemistry and working out that unity that you're talking about? 
Well, it is raucous. One of the things I like to do is watch prime minister's questions uh, over in the in the UK because you get to see people joust and intellectually spar. And I think iron sharpens iron. And so I, I'm not in, in any way concerned about more transparency. And you know, even though people can disagree on process or tactics, we share the same goals in the Republican conference. We want to get this economy moving again. We want a regulatory climate that's on the side of the American people, which is why we voted to defund the 87,000 IRS agents, and certainly we want to unlock the potential of American energy. There's a lot of important oversight work that's going to be coming. We're going to have to work strong as a team to be able to get that done. Doesn't mean we'll agree on every single choice or every single tactic, but at the end of the day, we did come together to elect a speaker. We did come together to pass transformational rules changes to the House of Representatives that will outlive me and outlive Kevin McCarthy, and I think that's the kind of reform to a broken Washington that our our constituents demand. Congressman Matt Gates, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we appreciate your time, and I think everybody likes uh, a little bit more unity everywhere. Thank you again. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.